Take with me this very phrase, right here, right now. Say it with me, would you? Right here, right now. One more time. Right here, right now. What does that suggest? It says in this moment, with no hesitancy, with no reservation, not waiting, no pause, but this moment being a key moment for our lives. I'm hoping that today we might challenge our hearts to realize that right here and right now, we begin creating the world that we desire to live in. Right here, right now, not waiting, not anticipating it someday further down the road, but it begins within our consciousness, within our hearts and our thoughts and our minds. Right now, right here in this moment, we begin this journey of creating and unfolding the wonderful desires of our heart, the kind of world that we would like to live in. Yet, I know many of us would say, wait a minute, all I see are challenges. All I see around me are challenges, difficulties, hardships, things that would say, Pastor, I'd like to create this wonderful world. I'd like to believe that this world, everything for my own individual community, for my life, for my home, for my family, would be wonderful and complete and everything falling together for good. But what I see are a lot of difficulties, obstacles, challenges in my way. Well, today's text that you read is a snippet from a beautiful story we're all so familiar with, Jesus feeding the 5,000. It's this beautiful lesson that speaks to us about the difference between a challenge, a challenge and an opportunity. For we find here the lesson for our lives is the disciples, what they saw were 5,000, not counting men and women, hungry people who needed to be fed. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're in charge of hospitality at any time, you know what it's like to say, oh, I got hungry people that need to be fed. I was dealing with a bride and she was discussing her reception, wondering what they were gonna do when the guest list had grown so big and they were concerned about all these hungry people, why are we gonna feed them? She said, can't we just all send them out to McDonald's? Can't they just go and get their own food? Can't they get something else? Instead, can't we just let them go and then they can come on back and we'll dance and celebrate and have a reception. I'll serve a little cake. I said, I don't think that's really how the reception really works. So you see, the challenge that we may have is we see the obstacles. Well, certainly they were. These disciples thinking, how am I going to feed? How is anyone going to provide enough food for this massive audience? The multitude on the hillside, how were they going to be fed? They saw challenge. Jesus saw opportunity. Big difference. One is all about stop, stop, hesitant. We can't go any further. The challenge is so great. The other is let's move forward and go because we see opportunities. In our life, we live in a stop and go world. We're constantly trying to shift between those two. Our stop is, oh, I see a challenge. Oh, I don't know. I don't know where to go from here. I don't know how to move forward. And then we see an opportunity. Green light says move forward. Let's go through it. We see the shift. We make a change within our whole outlook. Important that we understand that the Spirit of God is calling us constantly to make a shift in our focus, to shift from those things that we see as obstacles, challenges in our life, to constantly every day seeing opportunities. We live in a world of infinite opportunities. So many possibilities that are there for us. If we just simply recognize that, it releases the hesitancy. It releases the red light and allows it to go green instantly before us. Now, wouldn't you love it if you had that kind of power every time you're at the intersection, that you could turn the light instantly from red to green mm -hmm. and on your uh, expression and on your word and on your confirmation, on your consciousness? Well, in life, you have that opportunity. It is available for you. Maybe not at every intersection in the physical realm with the red light and green light, but certainly to move forward, to move from the outlook of challenges in our life to see opportunities. You, do you see every circumstance, every event in your life as a moment that right here, right now, in this midst of that moment, you could create something wonderful, that you could unfold a, a beautiful blessing for someone else or for yourself? Do you see it from that perspective? Because that's the challenge that we're invited to. This whole lesson about Jesus feeding the 5,000 is not just all about hospitality. It's not just about food service. It's not just about a miracle that Jesus may perform that has no application to our own life. But it's about us learning the lessons of a way of living each and every day that when a challenge comes, 
We turn it around when life gives you lemons and make lemonade. It might be the very spiritual application or a paraphrase of this whole lesson for our lives. The power is there to do good works in every moment that bring glory to God. That every situation is simply an opportunity for you to do good works. So you might look at every challenge that comes your way to say, wait a minute, what good can I do in the midst of this? What good works can I do? How can I be a light for the world? How can I shine my light and bring glory to God? What might I do in this moment, right here, right now, changing my thinking, changing my outlook, to see a way that I could be a blessing, that I could see this as an opportunity for something wonderful to transpire? What can I do with this moment is the question. What can I do with this moment? When we encounter all kinds of things in life, are we asking that question? Every single day when we wake up, are we asking that question? As we move through the journey of the day at work or in times of social gatherings or pleasure, are we asking that question? What can I do with this moment that brings glory to God? Wow. Big shift in the way we live. Well, this beautiful biblical lesson is a teaching moment. A teaching moment not only for those 2,000 years ago, but it echoes down through time. It's a teaching moment for us today, right here and now. We're examining the story, we're reading this lesson, and we're finding its spiritual truth is so powerful, it is timeless and it is ageless. As Jesus begins to see from a different focus. Now the disciples, their focus is hunger, big numbers, how are we going to do it? This seems too difficult. A focus of says obstacles. Jesus's focus is that of looking through the spiritual eyes, seeing the possibilities, this opportunity. Here he's been teaching on the hillside and how ridiculous for the disciples to say, send them home to find food, send them somewhere else to find food. When his whole message has been about feeding and providing and the opportunities for blessing and God's great abundance, God's generosity, God's willing to give. God's very lessons for our lives of all things working together for good. Well, suddenly he's given the greatest opportunity of all to sort of illustrate all that he's been bringing forth as we look through the gospel lessons of the teaching of Jesus. What is it all summed up but the very love of God? And here it's being demonstrated in this moment where he sees it's an opportunity to say, I can, we can, together we can. It is possible. I see this as an opportunity to bring glory to God. What can I do in this moment? What can I do in this moment to bring glory, to bring a blessing, to unfold the possibilities, to create the kind of world that I would love to see and live in? Well, Jesus said, I can do it right here and right now. And this lesson invites us to do the same. That we might welcome this to say life is full of an opportunity. Every day, every turn, every corner we go to, every new road we travel down is full of an opportunity. What will we do with this moment? Well, here's this beautiful lesson that unfolds for us as we see how to transform challenges into opportunities. Because we want to be able to make this shift. We're looking at the world this way and we're invited to look at the world this way. How do we make that shift so easily? Because it's not always easy for us because we're living in a world of all the physical that's so evident around us. I can imagine the disciples looking around and going, wow, I see 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, not counting the women and children. Mm, we've got how many fish and how many loaves? And this is an impossibility. This ain't going to ever work out. There is no way. Well, we see this, and yet Jesus saw the opportunity. And here again, we're invited to move away from the appearances of everything around us, constantly to shift focus, to say, it doesn't matter what the physical appearances may be. The manifestation of the miraculous happens when we leave our attachments to the physical and allow the spiritual to unfold in wonderful ways. Key word here is unfold. How many of you know what that word means, to unfold? Well, you may unfold some towels. You may unfold some shirts. You may unfold some things. You understand what that's all about when we look at it from that term. But spiritually, unfolding is to reveal, to open up, to reveal something, to reveal what is present, 
to allow it to emerge. It's what is there already. We're allowing it to unfold. It's the blossoming of a flower. It's the blooming of that bud. It's the opening of that which is already there for you. So when we allow something to unfold, that's the beginning of our journey of transforming any challenge into an opportunity. We allow the good that's already there. There's good already present. It's already there. It's in the midst of each and every one of us. But we need to allow it to unfold within our journey. So we want to start by teaching our thoughts to expect and prepare for the best. How many of you spend some time in the classroom with your thoughts? You as the teacher, you as the instructor, taking charge and saying, I'm going to teach my thoughts something. Yeah, a lot of people don't even think about that. I never really thought about teaching my thoughts. I never really thought about shaping my thoughts. I never really thought about that kind of spiritual work at all. I just let thoughts come willy-nilly. Whatever happens comes to my mind. I just And I choose to entertain some and let go of some of the others. And sometimes I entertain a few that I shouldn't be entertaining. <laughs> well, have we taken time out to teach our thoughts? Teach our thoughts to expect the highest and best. This is why we emphasize over and over again the importance of a daily spiritual practice that includes affirmations. Affirmations that are simply stating the promises of God, simply stating the very law of God, simply stating that all things are more beautifully working together for good. They affirm the positive. They affirm the good that's there. They unfold what's already there in your thinking. It's already present, the goodness of God. So you're doing the unfolding, the opening, the revealing, the emergence of good as you spend time each day with the importance of teaching your thoughts through the power of these affirmations. Reading, great. I hope you're reading them. I hope you're writing them. How beautiful that is to write them down. The physical act of writing something down. And it really does something powerful with teaching and shaping and forming our thought life within us. Speaking them aloud in the affirmative and positive way, I think it's really powerful to maybe read it, write it down, speak it, and go through that exercise over and over again. How many of you, when you were in school, maybe you did something wrong, teacher called you up, you had to write it on the blackboard, I will not say that nasty word again, or I will not act up in class, I will not act up in class, and said, I want you to write that out. 50 times on the blackboard. Maybe that's a little antiquated in the style of punishment, but some of you may have remembered that in school because some of us are of a more mature age when days of uh, the laptop wasn't there and there was something called a blackboard where you younger ones may not be a fair or acquainted with and chalk. Um, and we wrote on those boards and we had to write out over and over again and the teacher wanted you to say it, speak it, write it, affirm it over and over and over again there was a way of teaching and shaping your thoughts and your act would shape your actions how important it is i think because what happens when we do this kind of work of speaking writing and really embracing it in such a wonderful way of reading it out loud of really embracing this affirmative what happens is we create a resonance our spiritual life begins to resound have a resonance with it, its vibrational frequencies begin to match what happens. As we listen to this law, all things work together for good. When we listen to these promises of God, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When we begin to claim in the affirmative the wonderful truths of that what you sow, you reap. When we speak of these laws of generosity, when we speak of the laws of attraction, that which we put out comes to us. These spiritual laws have always been there through the ages. What happens is suddenly our thought life begins to resonate, match in vibrational understanding. It begins to create a resonance that's there, that a vibration that is there sympathetically, shall we say, in a sense of unity. In fact, that the vibrations can create the same sound to be echoed to one another. Have you ever been out there in some place in an echo chamber, maybe in a cave, out on a high mountaintop, and there you begin to shout out something, hello, when you heard back, hello, 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 hello. Mm -hmm. How important it is there, the echo chamber that you're in, that we create this to teach our thoughts. God is good, God is good, God is good, God is good. Hello, I believe in God's goodness. Hello, I believe in God's goodness. Hello, I believe in God. You know, how wonderful that resonates. 
that begins to echo within the chambers of our thoughts, we begin to shape and teach to transform our thinking in a powerful way to expect the very best. Now, woo, think about that. You want to teach and train your thoughts. What you want to teach and train to do is to expect the very best, not to expect the worst. Because there's a lot of us who live in a world where something happens and we start playing, let's play worst case scenario. You know, that's a little game that we think we're taught to be oh, practical and good business people. Let's think out worst case scenario. And suddenly we want to jump to that place in our day to day life in old situations. Someone said something to me on a text and oh, you think, wait a minute, what's the worst meaning that they're trying to convey here rather than the best meaning? Because sometimes we don't always understand a text message or an email and we don't interpret the words correctly. So we can get uh, kind of a misinterpretation. We think the worst and think of thinking the best. You know? So here it is where we've got to begin to teach and train thoughts to embrace and expect the very best in all things. Now here's the thing that we find in this beautiful lesson for us. Jesus, first thing he does was tell people to sit down and expect to be fed. Wow. Before you begin, he already said, sit down and expect to be fed. Well, could you imagine if we began to think that way? That when a challenge comes to us, we just quiet the crazy thing, the monkey chatter in our mind and say, sit down and expect the highest and best. Sit down and get ready because the highest and best is coming. Sit down and, best and welcome and expect something miraculous happening with your life. Well, Jesus began this wonderful story experience by sharing with them the importance of everyone be seated and move into groups because get ready, dinner's coming. I love that. Get ready. Wow. Here's the thousands of people coming in expectation and expecting now that there was going to be something miraculous that was happening. I want to encourage you then to transform challenges to opportunities. Start by valuing everything you have. Every single experience, every moment, everything you possess, everything you're going through, value it. Value it. You know how easy it is in our life to belittle the things that we do have? Well, I don't have much, they'll say. Well, this isn't really that great. I'd like to offer this, but it's not the best. It's not really, really something fabulous. Can I offer this? Can I give this? I'd like to do whatever, I'd like to share whatever, but it's really not that great. We begin to belittle all the things that we have instead of valuing them and valuing every aspect of it because within that which you already have is potential for something great. Now, those of us who may be working as gardeners and appreciate these wonderful, high, big, glorious oak trees or pine trees, whatever it may be that are out there in our forests and our land around us, that provide all this luxurious shade in this hot Georgia sun. You think about it. Someone gave you a small little seed, and you would go, what? This is for my yard, for my landscaping, for my garden. What? This tiny little thing? But within that tiny little thing is the birthing of a great pine tree that will stand hundreds of years, or a great oak that will spread its branches and provide shade, leaves stretching out wide and far. You see the potential that's in that little seed? But we might look at those things within our life like they're little seeds and just belittle it. Ah, this isn't anything. This is nothing. This isn't anything really that important. There's no real value, only to find that it is the source of great potential is that seed, that which you have. Don't belittle. Begin to value everything that you have where Jesus began to work with just the simple basket that the young boy had offered. This is what we have to work with, just a few loaves and fishes. He could be little as a, everybody else could have been little. The whole crowd could have burst in laughter. Thousands of people on the mountainside echoing laughter. It's like, how ridiculous, how silly to think something miraculous is coming out of something this small or insignificant. Beautiful thing is, Jesus didn't allow a moment for anyone to belittle, for he did not belittle the value of this boy's gift. Here it is important to see our potential in everything that we've been given. It is the basis, and that will transform every challenge. You've been given something, it's the seed for something great. 
You've been given a challenge, a circumstance, something's coming your way, some sort of uh, obstacle that you may think is the stoplight saying, red, 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 hold it, you can't go further. Suddenly you realize, oh, it's the birthing of something that has potential for something great to unfold within it. It's now shifted to the green light. Let's move, let's go forward. Now, one of the things that we see in Jesus' ability to transform challenges into opportunities is that he blessed. I want to encourage you to do this. Bless everything. Just bless it. Bless everything. You know, get out there this morning, bless your hair, bless your clothes, bless what you're doing. You know, bless one another, bless your heart, and mean it. Uh, you know, go ahead and bless everything, bless all these kind of things that are around you. Because what is this power of blessing? But what we're doing is we're speaking the good. That's what a blessing is all about. I speak the good. I speak this quickening spiritual power upon you. I speak your good. I bless you. I call out your highest. And it is this wonderful power then of multiplication because as you speak blessing, as you call out good, good springs forth. So bless everyone. Do you ever drive down Interstate 85 and offer some blessing? I know some of you have some blessings that you may do for those who are in traffic, those little hand gesture blessings. Uh, well, I want you to turn those around to words of blessing and expressions of blessing. God bless you as you speed by in front of me. God bless you as you make that lane change without that uh, turn signal. God bless you as you, you know, drive without your headlights on tonight. God bless you. You know, just but speak the good in every circumstance. Because as we bless it, we transform it. As we speak the good upon it, we confer this wonderful blessing in a wonderful way. What we're actually doing is offering a sacred energy. Now this may be kind of interesting because we need to kind of laugh at blessings and maybe take them light. But I want you to know that when we look at the breakdown of the word bless, it comes from the Anglo-Saxon word which signifies blood. Wow. That sounds like an odd connection, bless and blood. But what was blood seen as? Sacred life force. The sacred life force, valued. And it was a life force, an energy that was given out. So that word blessing is, signifies this life force energy that we share when we say, there's good, I bless you with good, I anoint you with good, I believe for your good, I speak your good, I bless your good. What it does is it calls it forth and something amazing happens. Jesus blessed what was given. Given those loaves and fishes, he blessed it and called forth the good with a great expectation out of it, offering this wonderful sense of a power, of a sacred life force that comes out as spoken over this meal that was about to be shared. And with it, something amazing happened. So I invite you to bless your mind, bless your thoughts, bless your body as the temple of the Lord, bless your affairs with love, Bless your day-to-day -day journey. And that is to speak it. Bless it. I bless today's actions. I bless it with God's goodness. I speak this in the affirmative. This is where it's really powerful for us maybe even to do a little scripting. You write out exactly your blessing, what you're saying, what you're speaking. You write it out. Today I bless this day with all goodness. And I know that in this day, write it out, God is unfolding in this way. Something good is happening. Something amazing is happening. I am being a light for the world. I am changing every challenge into an opportunity. I am shifting focus. I see green lights all the way. We could go on and on and script exactly the desire that we're trying to create within our lives. How important it is. Let me offer this blessing to you. You might turn to someone and say, I love you. I bless you. I see all the good in you. And I have faith in you. Wonderful, simple way. I love you. I bless you. I see the good in you. I have faith in you. Wow, what an energy-giving uh, statement that is. It evokes something within us. How wonderful for you to hear someone says, well, first of all, they love us. Oh, don't we love that? Mm -hmm. Just to hear that we're loved is amazing. Then to hear someone say that they're blessing us, they're speaking good upon us, and that they see the good in us. They see the potential in us. And then along with that, they, we speak this wonderful word that says, I have faith. I believe in you. I believe in what you can do. I believe in your actions. 
I believe in everything you're saying. I believe in everything you're, how you move and live within this world. I believe in you and I have faith that you're unfolding your highest and best. I have faith that you're transforming your challenge into an opportunity. How beautiful that is. Another way to transform all of these challenges into opportunities is to always give thanks. To be grateful. Grateful for what's evident, first of all. And I think Jesus was very grateful that, hey, I got something to start with. Maybe just a couple of loaves and fishes, but I am grateful. I am very evident I got one basket. I got a starting point. I got one basket. I'm grateful for what's evident. And then I'm grateful that thousands are going to be fed. Wow, that's an affirmative gratitude that says, I've already moved to the end. My gratitude and thanksgiving is says, I already see the outcome, and I'm grateful for the outcome. I'm grateful for the way that it's going to manifest. I'm grateful for the way that my day is going to turn out. I'm already grateful for the outcome before it's even transpired. And I'm also grateful for everything that I expect. Wow. When we are grateful in this manner, we transform these obstacles. We transform them. And suddenly they become beautiful opportunities to be the light for the world. Now, here's another tip in this transformation process. Start this wonderful multiplication of anything by breaking it, giving it, and sharing it. You want to multiply things? Break them, give them, and share them. In my neighborhood, in Riverwood subdivision, we've got a little bit of a garden club forming as people are all talking about all their different plants and said, I broke this off. This plant was from my mother's garden and she got it from her mother's garden and they got it from her mother's garden and it's generation after generation and I broke off this plant. Here it is, I wanna share it. And it's funny because they say, every time we break, a little bit off. The plant seems to grow bigger. Now, in nature, we see this wonderful multiplication going on. Suddenly, we've got neighbors going, hey, I've got this plant, I've got this, i got a little clipping of this, i got a little clipping of that, I've got a cutting of this, I've got a cutting of that, and yet it's just multiplying. Barry, you know that, you've got a beautiful garden yourself, and you do some gardening, and you see as you cut off some things, they just spread, and they go. Connie's doing some wonderful things in gardening as well. Many of you others, Jim, I see your garden on Facebook, your house, all of your plants. As we look at them, we see this principle of multiplication. So if you want things to multiply, break them, give them, share them. Love, break it, give it. Share it. Grace, break it, give it, share it. Forgiveness, break it, give it, share it. Tear off a portion, break it, open. Do whatever you can that it because it begins to multiply and flourish within our life. So too our prosperity and our blessings happen. When we begin to share, when we begin to give, it begins to create a multiplication within our lives, within our world, in, in our societies around us. So what we see is that Jesus broke and gave and calling the very same for our lives as an example of how we shift and transform any challenge into an opportunity. Now here's a beautiful note. Jesus invited and utilized all faculties to bring about this miraculous event. And I want to encourage you to use all your faculties. What did Jesus do? He said, disciples, take this and start giving it up. And the disciples were those faculties, those things that he had to use to work with. Here, you take a basket, you take some of this, you take some of that, you take, and begin to share. And begin to work the whole circumstance of hospitality and making sure that the miracle was manifested in a beautiful way. He used the faculties. He used what was available to him. What do you have available to you? What are your faculties? Well, use those those mental capabilities within you to the fullest. Begin to employ those gifts that begin to shift and change. That gift of visualization. I want you to begin to visualize that challenge now being transformed into a great opportunity. And you begin to see it. You begin to visualize it. In this moment, right here and now, I am creating something wonderful. I am now creating the world that I desire. I visualize it. I see a change. 
I'm experiencing a change. I see what it looks like. In my mind's eye, my mental image is I've already visualized the good. I visualize the end goal. Have faith in it. Use the faculty of believing and of faith in each and every circumstance. And allow that believing, the power of that, to be transformational. Use and allow the power that you have to flow through you. Use everything you have and use it all. How important that is. For these are keys to helping you to transform, to do the miraculous right here, right now, and in this moment. Because this whole message is about Jesus didn't hesitate. Did you ever notice that there was no hesitation in Jesus? Was there saying, well, you know, can you give me about a half hour or 30 minutes? Or can you give me about, can we, get, can we do this dinner thing a little bit later? Uh, it's a little early. How about we have dinner after six? Uh, how about we provide this miracle tomorrow? You know, could you just work with me a little bit? I need some time here. It was in this moment, right here, right now. He responds to the need. Because this moment is your moment. We find this very thought echoed in the Old Testament, the story of Queen Esther. Queen Esther, chosen for such a time as this. Key phrase, as you read through that book and what jumps out, is that this is her moment. Right here, right now, she had to make a decision. For you see, Queen Esther was a Jewish woman in the closet. She was married to the king of Persia, and yet the king did not know that she was a Jew, living a life secluded, shall we say, about her heritage and who her people were, removed from any awareness of society. She lived in the closet as a Jewish woman, though she was the, the queen. And when there was a decree to bring animosity, to bring chaos, to bring challenge, to bring all kinds of things to the Jewish people, that the king was going to be the instrument to bring it about, Esther knew she could go before the king. Now the challenge was to go before the king without an invitation. Could mean that you could be beheaded and rejected. Because the king just didn't allow anyone to come. You had to come by invitation. So she went and dressed up in her finery, looking ever so beautiful and ready that the, she might get the king's attention. And as the doors opened, I can imagine, to this throne room, and she walked in uninvited. The king maybe think, who is coming in? Let me grab this scepter to decree that this person is put to death. Oh, wait. It's my beautiful wife, Esther. She's come in this unusual moment to bring about something. Let me listen. Let me hear her out. Right here, right now, in this moment, Esther made a choice to risk her life, to defend her people and the Jewish community, to speak out before the king. She risked everything and stepped forward, but she didn't hesitate because scripture says, who knows, but that you were chosen for this moment. So when you look at every obstacle and every challenge in your life, who knows, but you were chosen for this moment, for this moment to be the light, to bring glory to God, to transform a consciousness from this being a great challenge, but in this moment to say, oh no, this was God's great opportunity. This wasn't something I dread. This wasn't something I need to fear. This isn't something I'm filled with anxiety and worry and stress about. Instead, I see this as God's divine moment. I may have been chosen for this moment to be the light, to be the blessing, to be that which, which ushers in uh, the safety and sanctuary of others or for myself. You see, the analogy is there as Scripture speaks to us and invites us to a journey that we are people of transformation. We transform obstacles into an opportunity. We do that through this wonderful lesson of the journey of Jesus and how this spiritual lesson unfolds for us step by step, key by key, notice by notice, word by word, the pathway that we might be a transformational body, that we might be the people who create the world we desire to see. But we take obstacles, we take challenges, and say, thank you, God. I am grateful for, I am, for this moment may be my destiny right here, right now. Amen. Amen.